Who will like Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition? The two kinds of people that will enjoy this game the most are first person shooter fans and those who enjoy awesome comedy in games, especially cheesy comedy. I was amazed at some of the bare bones humour bits. The way they came out of nowhere and delivered unexpected laughter was fucking awesome. I'm sure by the time you're done laughing at the absurdity and disgustingly awesome segments this game has to offer, you'll think less of yourself as a human being. For me personally, that means I've played a truly fantastic game, Learning Curve. Without so much as even looking at the control scheme, I jumped straight into the multiplayer. I became familiar with the gameplay within just a few minutes of playing, so pretty quickly you'll be able to pick up the base gameplay and incredibly familiar first person shooter feel. What does take some time to learn are different skill shots. Skill shots are like a combination shot. An example in multiplayer would be where one person has to slide into an enemy and another person has to shoot them. This then scores as a team skill shot. There are many different variations of these skill shots and you'll find you pick them up throughout just playing the game. By about the two hour mark without even realizing there was a menu that showed you the different requirements for these shots, my multiplayer partner Typhoon Justin and myself were starting to naturally figure them out. The second we realized there was actually a menu that showed us the different requirements for each shot, the learning curve on remaining skill shots dropped immediately. It became the equivalent of stealing candy from a baby. Ultimately, if you consult the menu for skill shots, you'll pick them up much faster than I did. I personally, though, prefer just playing the game and trying out different things as I go along. I find it much more fun that way. The biggest learning curve in the game, however, actually comes from the unusual control scheme. I found myself, even after 10 hours of playing, still occasionally clicking in the left analog stick to sprint. So many first person shooters have almost standardized certain buttons at this point, and for some reason Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition have chosen the weirdest layout. Getting used to these buttons does take a while, and in the 3 hour multiplayer I was playing with Typhoon Justin, even he was saying things like, sorry man, I'm just not used to pressing in A to sprint. So it's not just me that found the control scheme odd. Character customization. The campaign does give you an option to use Duke Nukem. As much as I loved the primary character and his awesome mutton chops, I used Duke on my first playthrough this time around. Having completed the game, I'm very much looking forward to going through it again with the main primary character. The need for character customization in multiplayer doesn't really exist either. You'll be so busy with the fast paced action that you don't even have time to really stop and look at another character and say, oh you so pretty. There is an option in multiplayer to go into your character customization and change a few things like your gun camo, your boot camo, your leg camo, etc etc. Now that's all well and good. But it's just an addition, that's not what the gameplay is actually about. The one thing I do like that you can actually customise is your leash colour. They've given you quite a few options. So if you can manage to find the multiplayer game, that'll actually be something really cool to try out. Control Scheme With so many first person shooters out now, I'm fairly certain most gamers would agree that certain buttons do certain things, like clicking in the left analogue stick should sprint. However, not in this game. In fact, the control scheme was my least favourite part of this game. So much so that you might want to skip ahead as I'm about to launch into a fair amount of passionate detail out of love in hope that they can improve their next game. If you want to skip ahead, skip ahead now. There are timestamps in the top pinned comment and in the description. Okay. There are so many other ways they could have laid out the buttons, but for whatever reason they chose to go with things like A for sprint, but not just pressing A, you have to hold it in to sprint. Now unless you're a full blown MLG 360 no scope Mountain Dew Pro Bro, chances are you don't hold controllers in the claw by default. Therefore sprinting, looking and stopping to turn, oh brother why art thou likest thee? This button layout feels fucking terrible for a few reasons. Firstly, if you can only sprint by holding in the button, but you need to turn left or right just a little to make a corner, thus taking your thumb off the fucking button, it immediately stops you sprinting until you've turned just a little bit and can once again hold in the fucking button. 
How absurd. On top of not having an option to allow auto sprint always on, mapping sprint to a button that takes your thumb off the turning analog stick, straight up it feels outdated and wrong. Now this wasn't the only unusual combination of buttons. Changing weapons was also odd and awkward. Holding in the Y button, then using the D-pad or analog to select a weapon. The hover effect while you're trying to select the weapon is barely visible. There's no real noticeable change to the weapon box. The simple weapon image goes from a regular colour to a white colour. And that's very hard to see when you're trying to change weapons quickly. You don't want to sit with the menu open and look at a weapon and go, Oh, I've got to change the weapon. Oh, what's going on? Where's my fucking weapon? That's too much, man. It just should be a very quick, simple change and immediately you know what you're hovering over. But that doesn't actually exist in this game. In fact, the button combination to change to the third weapon feels so awkward. I often just played the game with two weapons and only switched to a third when I really, really needed to. I'd much prefer to see the Y button pressing it just cycling through all the weapons. Be much faster. Now there are two alternatives to the default clunky controls. Paddle controllers and switching to another in-game alternative button layout. The problem with different in-game button layouts are there are a whole three to choose from and all three are really unusual choices. Now the problem with paddle controllers, one, they're not a standard thing that come with all consoles. Two, as someone who owns one, I choose not to use the paddles because I still think they're a few generations off being included as pressure plates inside the control grip. And three, I'm a gamer who just wants to play the fucking game. I don't want to spend time in some menu making a control layout with a paddle controller just for that game. So without a solid control foundation for the default controls in the game, they're doing themselves and all gamers who play that game a huge disservice. The control scheme is definitely something I'd like to see improved immensely going forward into a sequel. User interface. I love the user interface in this game. It's clean, simple, and for a game that wants you to feel the action, the text pop-ups do a fantastic job of being there without demanding all the attention in the known universe. Hello Titanfall 2. I felt Bulletstorm nails the simple user interface and in-game HUD incredibly well. So much so that I believe this is what Titanfall 2 was trying to rip off and they failed immeasurably. Even something simple like crouching raises the on-screen HUD and text so you know you're crouching incredibly fast. I love simple, I love action, I love in your face, I love fast. Bulletstorm's user interface accomplishes all of that with a very clean and slick feel. Menu design. Bulletstorm not only has a lovely animated menu with beautiful scenery and an awesome main character picture, but the menu itself has a very clean, slim feel to it. It reminds me of games from yesteryear, where you knew the people making every part of a game were incredibly passionate. The menu sets a fantastic example of how to get a gamer from the menu to the action in a really fast, clean way. Did I mention I love simple menus? Graphics. Some games do a piss poor job of looking great on both small and large screens, but not Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. I play on a 23 inch monitor and the graphics looked great. I was quite surprised by how awesome they also looked when I ran this footage through a 40 inch TV. The actual gameplay looks awesome, very clean and sharp. The same goes for the cutscenes. There are some truly awesome visuals. However, the one thing I found with the cutscenes is the characters have an incredible plastic rubbery look to them, and their mouths move unusually. Not all characters, and I know playing as Duke Nukem doesn't represent the main character too well, so I didn't really mind to be honest with you. I'm not one of those people that's really into cutscenes and all that jazz. Normally I skip them, even on first playthroughs. 
However, having fond memories of Bulletstorm, I sat through them on my first play this time around, partly because I didn't want to miss any comedy. So while in the big picture, cutscenes and cutscene graphics are a non-issue for me, if you're a real stickler for that kind of shit, then they'll definitely have your teeth grinding together. Gameplay. I'm going to break gameplay into a few parts. As there are three main game modes you can initially play, they will be the parts. Campaign, Echoes, and Multiplayer. Campaign has a run-of-the-mill story. However, upon completing the campaign, and I'm not sure if it's for completing it on the very hard difficulty like I did, it unlocks a bonus fourth mode, Overkill Mode. Think of Overkill Mode as the ultimate way to play any game. All weapons unlocked, and then completing all skill shots for that weapon unlocks unlimited ammo for that weapon. I quiet genuinely can't wait to go through the game again, in overkill mode. Overall, the campaign was very enjoyable, and flowed through different environments and scenery consistently. There are some truly awesome laugh out loud moments that caught me off guard. From the time I started recording the campaign gameplay, to the time I finished recording the campaign, it totaled at 8 hours, 34 minutes and 44 seconds. Now that was on the hardest difficulty, with me meddling around in the menus and playing with achievements and what have you. I haven't yet gone through and cut down the footage to figure out actual playtime, but with respawn checkpoints, looking in the menu for how to complete skill shots, opening up your weapon recharges, honestly, I'd guess it would come in somewhere around 7 hours of actual playtime. I'd say most people would get through this in 2 days, and I'd actually recommend playing it over a couple of days. When I was around 3 quarters of the way through the game, I started making silly mistakes, but I knew I was almost there, so I pushed through it. I think I'd personally have enjoyed it much more over a couple of days. When you've completed the game, the fact you then just want to run through it on overkill mode as fast as you can, that speaks volumes about how great the game truly was. In overkill mode, running through it skipping all the cutscenes on the hardest difficulty, I reckon it will come in around 4 hours if you really push yourself. So 4 hours of actual playtime on the hardest difficulty in overkill mode the second time through. That's not too bad. Echoes are challenge levels. I'm not going to lie, the first echo I did was after I completed the game on the hardest difficulty, and I just annihilated it. It was about as close to being a challenge as it is for a monkey to eat a banana. It wasn't. There are a lot of challenge levels, and as you go through them they do get a little bit harder, and on top of that then there's bonus advanced challenge levels where you actually have to unlock the level through doing skill shots before you can actually post a score on the leaderboard for that level. So if you're into challenges and completing the game to 100%, there is a lot to keep you entertained there. For me personally, the echoes weren't enough of a challenge and I'd rather go through the campaign on overkill mode a couple of times, as after all the echo maps are just parts of the level from the campaign. So if you've played the campaign, the Echo should be a walk in the park. Multiplayer was the first thing I played in Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. I'm all about multiplayer in this day and age. Unfortunately the multiplayer wasn't player versus player though. It just meant you were partnered up with other people and have to complete 20 waves of enemies. A little like zombies from Call of Duty, but slightly different. As I jumped right in, around wave 12 or 13, the gamer I was playing with, Typhoon Justin, and I started noticing that we had to actually team skill shot in order to get enough points to complete a wave. I found if we just miss the required score, when it reloads the wave and you get to try again, if you were going to get the required score, you would smash the score out of the park. If you were going to miss the score, you would just miss the score. Considering we completed the 20 waves on my very first game, having not read anything, no control scheme, no guides or anything, the multiplayer mode is very easy. The hardest part was getting the required score on the annoying sniper waves. 
The snipers just come in individually and they're very hard to get group kills on. I'd love to see the multiplayer have unlimited waves that get harder and faster and then even harder and even faster again and again and again and don't require a score to complete. Like an overkill mode from the campaign, but for multiplayer. That said, we both had a lot of fun playing the multiplayer and I think as you learn how to complete different team skill shots, you'll enjoy it as you both just try and obliterate the score with team kill after team kill. I was still really let down by the fact there was no player versus player though. I was really hoping for another first person shooter with a decent multiplayer and that was fast and going to be fun. So the fact it doesn't have that has me quite unerect. Improvements they could make. I really hope they make a sequel with a proper player vs player multiplayer. However, if they do, there are definitely some improvements I think they should make to the base gameplay. As I've already been quite elaborate about the control scheme and a few other improvements within these points I've covered, I'll leave the improvements to another video where I cover each one in more detail there. However, to sum up a few of the improvements I think most people may agree on, the character lips and cutscenes need fixing. You seem to get stuck running around or sliding around quite often on what appears to be nothing. That's very frustrating and I would definitely like to see fixed. Always sliding and another character walking in front of you stopping your slide happens so often. Same as if you just start running, it feels like your secondary character in the story always somehow just jumps ahead of you, teleports ahead of you and blocks you from running. That was incredibly frustrating. Button layout for sprinting, button layout to cycle weapons, adding more sensitivity to the game because the levels that are there aren't enough, especially the aim down sight sensitivity. I don't know why that goes so ridiculously slow. I'd like to see an option for players that need it fast to be fast. The screen kind of jumping and jolting, it's not screen tearing, it's a jolt. Almost like the game pauses momentarily to empty the cache and load the next section of the game. It was very noticeable in the campaign, but not as much in the multiplayer. It's kind of hard to put that into a video for you guys to actually see, because it's one of those things when you see it you're like, damn this is frustrating. But trying to actually capture that, remembering where you captured it, and then putting it into an actual video editor that doesn't render that kind of stuff out, that's kind of hard to do. So I apologise for not having that here, but that definitely happens and I'll try and cover it in the other video. Things I liked. Man, the humour in this game was so fucking good. I love humour in video games, especially when there's different styles of humour and they fused them all together and just made this like one awesome epic action packed mayhem adventure. It's great shit. One of the other big things I really love is the sniper bullet travel time. How it slows down and you get to like curve it into an enemy. Even missing, you still feel like you, you know, should have got the shot, but it was an awesome experience just getting the bullet to miss. It's a lot of fun, like there's a lot of fun in the game. You know, especially if you take into account that you can use a sniper rifle to get somebody to be penetrated or to be voodoo dolled or to be backdoor rear entry. There's so many cool different sorts of skill shots that you can interact through with the world and with the weapons. All around, the humour and the skill shots mixed with the world and weaponry, they're the two greatest things in this video game by far. Would I buy Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition? Fuck yes. For me, humour topples everything and the amount of humour in this game brought me a lot of enjoyment and unexpected laughter. As did the fast paced, flowing, fun gameplay. I'm super looking forward to playing more multiplayer and going through the overkill mode. As a side note, a lot of people I've spoken with and seen talking about the game feel the price tag was too high for a rehashed game. I think that might be why there's a lot of people having problems finding multiplayer games. There wasn't a huge pickup for the game as people are hoping it'll come out on sale and they'll be able to get it quite cheaply. 
so I really hope at some point a lot more people do pick it up because right now trying to find a multiplayer game is very very hard to do so with that said I totally get this man if I wasn't desperate for a good fresh first person shooter I'd have waited till the price dropped too that said even if it's a year before you feel the price reflects what the game is worth to you you should still pick it up then Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition was a real treat and I cannot wait until they make a sequel with a real multiplayer player versus player. I'm fucking excited as shit for that man. Thanks very much for watching guys. Hopefully that's helped you make a decision as to whether or not you'll be picking up Bulletstorm Full Clip Edition. Whether it be today, in a week, a month or in a year's time from now. If these style of reviews to buy or not to buy is are tickling your pickle, I'd love if you'd subscribe or let me know in the comments a little bit more about what you want to see in these videos or how they should be edited and pieced together if you don't like the way that they're currently segmented. I'm happy to change the order up. Anyway, thanks very much for watching again and I'll catch you next time.